Hello, everybody. My name is Jimmy Smith from the Wine with Jimmy channel, and welcome to another session on understanding WSET level three. This one is understanding Canada with a working written question as ever at the end to help you understand how questions may be structured and asked of you and how you should answer them successfully. Um, this is from the winewithjimmy.com uh, website. Please have a look at that for our e-learning portal. This is one of the most useful tools for you for preparing for your level three examination. We've got a huge wealth of multiple choice questions, short written answer questions and answers, uh, and also things like more video content, flashcards and revision sessions. Um, the members only area there to subscribe to is really worth it if you want to really ace your level three examination. Um, so all the social media is at the bottom at Wine with Jimmy for Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. The wine schools are down there and the wine bar as well in London. I'll talk about that later at the end. Let's get cracking then for Canada for your level three. Now, it's not a large section, Canada, for your level three. So this won't be the largest, but uh, you may find this in multiple choice questions, I think, more over. But they could talk about things like hybrids or lake effects and include Canada in other questions. Uh, so for you guys, um, really, Canada is continental mainly throughout. Um, there are some differences, of course, like uh, with uh, with the island over in um, uh, uh, in, in British Columbia, um, but uh, really it's continental mainly throughout the wine regions and the annual temperatures are quite low, but July and August gets quite high due to that um, continental effect. Um, really large lakes play a huge, huge key point across the two areas that you need to know, that is the Okanagan Valley and the Niagara Peninsula. Um, so these will moderate those extreme temperatures due to the continentality um, and they can, of course, maintain a bit more warmth later on into the year to fully ripen grapes. Winters are bitterly cold, though, um, and long and temperatures may drop below zero frequently, which is ideal for ice wine production, specifically with Vidal and Riesling. We have two provinces that produce wine at quality level that you need to know at your level three. That is British Columbia and Ontario. Uh, now, British Columbia is the Okanagan Valley uh, and Ontario is all about Niagara Peninsula south of Toronto. So we will look at both of those as we go through. Um, the first one we're going to actually mention, though, is the Okanagan Valley. So this is looking towards the west, and this is in British Columbia. Uh, British Columbia actually has five uh, areas, which they call DVAs, um, but the key one here is the Okanagan Valley. So it's the large, uh, well, it's a very large one. Uh, it's in the rain shadow of mountain ranges, uh, Columbia, Canadian Rockies, etc. Um, so very low rainfall here in the Okanagan Valley. Um, and it's almost kind of like a semi-desert environment across this area. Um, the day lengths here are, are in the growing season very long due to its latitude. It's very high up in latitude, a little bit like the Germany effect. Uh, and there are these wonderful large glacial lakes. And the key one, of course, is the Okanagan Lake, the main one in the middle. Uh, and that actually goes uh, right down to a depth of 232 meters. Uh, so it's a very thin but deep glacial lake, a little bit like the Finger Lakes over in North New York State that we have mentioned on a previous video as well. That's a huge volume of water. It doesn't look like it when you're looking down at the lake, but it is very, very deep. And that means it stores heat and elongates the season being able to ripen the grapes quite well. Um, quite a big varied list of grapes in the Okanagan. Merlot does quite a lot here, but there's Pinot Noir, there's Pinot Gris, there's Chardonnay, and there's Cabernets as well. There's quite a few in play. Um, alcohols do tend to be on the higher side of life and quite ripe wines are produced in the Okanagan. Then we come across to um, Ontario. This is uh, 
um, south of Lake Ontario. Toronto is on the north side of the lake. This is the southern area. So this is uh, important because you've got quite a significant production of famous wine here, including, of course, ice wine. There are three DVAs within Ontario, but you just need to know the Niagara Peninsula which is the one we're looking at here, which has been split into its subzones. Um, it's on the Lake Ontario. Uh, it cools down and heats up slower than the surrounding land. And this extends the growing season into autumn uh, and also helps actually earlier on in the year because it delays uh, bud burst because of course it's, it's warming up slower. So you get a later start to the season, but that protects it from frosts. But then you have a late finish due to this um, sort of uh, warming effect of the very large Lake Ontario. Um, the uh, Riesling grape variety is very key here, making dry and off dry whites. They can be wonderfully vibrant and very acidic, but also really classed as a, a principal, if not the principal grape variety for ice wine. Uh, Vidal is another great variety here. And I'm gonna go through these separately in a second, but. It's a hybrid, it is very hardy, um, doesn't produce the most aromatic dry whites, but when it's produced as a sweet wine, like an ice wine, it really comes into its own. There's also really decent amounts of Chardonnay and Pinot Noir produced here. I think there's some amazing uh, Burgundian style wines being produced in the Niagara Peninsula. And there's also all the Bordeaux varieties in play here too. Cabernet Franc, Cabernet Sauvignon, and a little bit of Merlot as well. Um, so let's just have a look at a Google Earth video. So we have an idea of what we've been looking at. So um, of the Okanagan Valley and the Niagara Peninsula. Let's get that up here and let's press play. Oh, that's a lovely holding picture of the Niagara Falls. Okay, so there is Canada in the north of America. And we are going to first go across to British Columbia towards the Okanagan. And that big lake in the middle is the Okanagan Lake uh, at its deepest point, 232 meters, providing that excellent amount of trapped heat, which then will emit that off, producing a very large season. It's also sandwiched between mountains as well. So you'll find that it's protected from uh, any cold or wet weather that may come from the Pacific. So this area is dry, often semi-arid, as we've mentioned, and then affected by the lake. So it has a really capable and long growing season here, uh, producing a lot of things like Merlot, uh, Bordeaux varieties, Pinot Gris and Chardonnay. Now we go across to Ontario uh, and of course, um, capital by Toronto. Uh, but we're here first, the border of New, uh, New York State and Canada. And this, I just wanted to show you this because this, of course, is the very famous Niagara Falls, of which you can see it from both sides, the American and the Canadian side. Um, and the, um, yeah, it, a beautiful landscape and uh, very worth visiting. And not far away from there, of course, is the wine region that we need to look at. But that's Lake Ontario, which is the lake that produces... Uh, those real warming conditions. Um, it's such a large lake that it, of course, warms up and cools down slower. These are the vineyards right on Lake Ontario. Um, so this is the Niagara Peninsula, where we're finding quite interesting wines, a lot of really good Chardonnay, Pinot Noir and Riesling, and even Bordeaux varieties. But of course, uh, in some parts here, and due to the humidity that is uh, produced by L Lake Ontario, we'll find some quite interesting ice wine in this uh, zone as well. There are a few wine laws that we need to mention, first of all, as well. So the uh, we have what's called the VQA, and this is the Governing Wine Laws of Canada. So the Vintners Quality Alliance. Um, they are only applicable in two provinces that we've just looked at. That's British Columbia and Ontario. And they will be um, split into DVAs, little subzones within that. Um, each VQA must have 100% grapes grown in the specified province. So it must be if it's VQA Niagara Peninsula, it's got to be within that province that it's found in. 
and so on. So it's really governing the quality here and the authenticity, the product traceability, as it were. Uh, and it's normally 100% Vitis vinifera, Chardonnay, Pinot, Pinot Gris, Merlot, Cabernet Sauvignon, etc. And there are some selected approved hybrids as well. And our key approved hybrid for you guys that you need to know is Vidal Blanc that we'll go into in a second. But for Niagara Peninsula, the key grape varieties are Riesling and Vidal Blanc. Um, Riesling, remember, is uh, made in a myriad of styles across many places in the world. Here, making dry to sweet. Dry and off dry is quite common, but very sweet, acidic, pure, varietally styled ice wines are made from Riesling. It's arguably some of the best of them are made from Riesling. But then there is Vidal. Um, so the Vidal grape variety um, ooh, and I should actually probably, um, we won't go into too much on Riesling. Now, if you wanted to um, find out more information on Riesling, uh, so you understand the grape in depth and how it will be worked in the vineyard and in the winery, it's best to either look at the video, which is called Understanding the Mosel in Germany and Riesling, or look at our grape variety video on Riesling, the advanced version. You'll get plenty of information from that, so you can look at that in your own time. Um, then there is Vidal. Um, so we're not going into any specific detail about Vidal here, but let's put down a few things. Um, they, don't, they don't go into much detail, but I will give you a little bit more than you need to know. So it's called Vidal Blanc. Um, now, Vidal Blanc is actually a, um, uh, a, a crossing between two other grape varieties, okay? So this is um, a hybridization between a grape variety which is called Uni Blanc, whoops, otherwise known as Trebbiano, and that was crossed with a local native grape variety of Canada called Rayon d'Or. So that's basically a Vitis vinifera which has been crossed with a local variety, an American species, which is Rayon d'Or. And this has created a hybrid. If you cross together two Vitis viniferas, it's called a crossing. If it's a Vitis vinifera and an American species normally, uh, that will be called a hybrid. And a Vidal Blanc is a hybrid. It has taken on the freshness and the acidity of Uni Blanc and the, um, the, the capability of growing well in its localized environment of Rayon d'Or. It's quite a useful variety, in fact. Um, it doesn't produce the most complex dry wines, but they are produced, but it's most famous produced as an ice wine. And that's what we get into here. So ice wine production. Now, ice wine production, um, I won't go into the biggest detail. There's, they don't, they don't require to know too much. Just a few fundamentals about this. Um, so, ice wine is the English. Ice wine is the German. Of course, Germany and Canada being the most two important places in the world for it. Um, healthy grapes are left hanging on the vine into the winter, very cold winter months. Um, when these freezing temperatures arrive, the water in the grape freezes and it turns to ice. Um, this needs to normally be below minus 10 degrees Celsius. So this is remarkably cold because they want it to remain frozen as it is transported to the winery. The grapes will be um, picked, of course, pressed, and the ice remains in the press and the sugar content of the resulting juice is increased. You get a very pure, acidic sugar uh, as the water stays frozen, uh, but you extract the viscous juice and the acidity. It makes pure, bright, acidic, varietal sweet wines. They are wonderful, but they are expensive. Very, very premium. Um, so that is ice wine. Today, in some areas in the world, you can cryogenically freeze the grapes to produce ice wine. That is allowed in some areas like Catalonia in Spain, for instance. Okay, so a um, little bit on questions. So you um, can get a bit more of an understanding behind Canada and what may be asked of you 
by WSET in the examination. Um, here is a very famous Inner Skillin, one of the first wineries, if not the first winery of the Niagara Peninsula. And this is the Vidal. You'll see below that it actually says VQA Niagara Peninsula. Uh, so it is therefore the Vintners Quality Alliance of Niagara Peninsula. Um, describe the production methods from vineyard to the winery of this sweet wine. First of all, in the vineyard, as mentioned on the previous slide, healthy grapes are left hanging on the vine deep into the winter months. Often this will be January, February of the next year. When these freezing temperatures arrive, often below minus 10 degrees Celsius, the water in the grape turns into ice and these grapes will then be picked. Um, it's not a nice job. You have to go out in big sort of Eskimo type uh, jackets to protect yourself from these really cold conditions, minus 10, minus 50, minus 20 degrees Celsius, which is quite extreme. Um, it's not certainly the romantic side of grape picket picking that people often think of. Um, the winery. When these grapes are picked and pressed in the winery, the ice remains in the press, so it remains solid, and the sugar content of the resulting juice is in increased. Because that, when you press these frozen grapes, the viscous sugar and acidity comes out as a liquid, but the ice stays frozen, the water stays frozen. And this produces, of course, intensity of sugar, high acidities as well. It concentrates everything, producing very pure varietal character wines. What local conditions make the production of grapes possible in this very cold region? And this is talking about the lake effect more than anything here. So Lake Ontario cools down and heats up more slowly than the surrounding land, thus extending the growing season in the autumn, allowing grapes to ripen fully. Uh, and it also, at the start of the year, delays bud burst in spring, helping to minimize frost damage, which is a possibility here due to the fact it is a continental climate. OK, so that really is it. There's not much they can ask you about Canada. It's much more likely to be multiple choice focused around Vidal, uh, VQAs, um, those kind of things. I hope you have enjoyed this and that you found it useful for your studies for WSET Level 3. Um, if you have any comments or questions, please pop them in the comments section below this video on YouTube or get in touch with us, please, at Wine with Jimmy across social media like Instagram, Facebook and Twitter. The two wine schools at West London Wine School in Fulham, London, South London Wine School in Streatham, London and Streatham Wine House in South London is my wine bar. Next time you're in London, come and see us for a class, a glass or a bottle. Um, please remember to take a look at the e-learning platform, what we call the portal, on the winewithjimmy.com website. That has uh, access that you'll need to pay for, but gives you a brilliant wealth of information to help you study and get the best out of your level three examination. Thank you so much for your time. I'll see you soon. Goodbye.